Hey guys, this is Navard again. So this is our final recording of Holes, and we're going to read chapters 47 through 48. Tomorrow, or is it Thursday? Let's see. Nope, on Wednesday. So tomorrow, we're going to have a live Zoom session for chapters 49 and 50, the last two chapters of Holes. So today, we're going to read chapters 47 through 48. If you have not read those or listened to them, um, the, all the chapters beforehand, make sure you go back and you catch up and you answer those questions in the daily email. All right, guys, here we go. Last recording of holes, chapter 47. Stanley and Zero are stuck in that hole. They found Kissing Kate treasure or loot or whatever. They haven't been able to open the suitcase and the warden has caught them. And yellow spotted lizards are all over Stanley and Zero, so they're just frozen in this hole waiting to die. But for some reason, the lizards haven't bitten them yet. So let's see what happens. Chapter 47. The sun was up, and Stanley's heart was still beating. There were eight lizards in the hole with him. Each one had exactly 11 spots. The warden had dark circles under her eyes from lack of sleep, and the lines across her forehead and face which seemed exaggerated in the stark morning light. Her skin looked blotchy. Safe, said Zero. Stanley looked at him, unsure if Zero had even spoken or if he just imagined it. Why don't you go and see if you can take the suitcase from Zero, the warden suggested. <laughs> You're right, said Mr. Sir. The lizards obviously aren't hungry, said the warden. Then you get the suitcase, said Mr. Sir. They waited. They waited. Say to Lee, said Zero. Sometime later, Stanley was in a taran saw a tarantula crawl across the dirt, not too far from his hole. He'd never seen a tarantula before, but there was no doubt what it was. He was momentarily fascinated by it, as its big hairy body moved across and moved slow and steady along. Look, a tarantula, said Mr. Sir, also fascinated. I never ha I've never seen one, said the warden, except in... Stanley suddenly felt a sharp sting on the side of his neck. The lizards hadn't bitten him, however. It was nearly pushing off. It leapt off Stanley's necks and pounced on the tarantula. The last thing Stanley saw was its one hairy leg sticking out of the lizard's mouth. Not hungry, huh? said Mr. Sir. Stanley tried to return to the snow, but it was getting harder to get there when the sun was up. As the sun rose, the lizards moved lower in the hole, keeping mainly in the shade. They were no longer on his head and shoulders, but, remo but moved down to his stomach, legs, and feet. He couldn't see any lizards on Zero's, but believed there were two because Zero's knees shaded from the sun by the suitcase. How you doing? Stanley asked quietly. He didn't whisper, but his voice was dry and raspy. My legs are numb, said Zero. I'm going to try and climb out of the hole, Stanley said. Oh. As he tried to pull himself up, using just his arms, he felt a claw dig into his ankle. He gently eased himself back down. Is your last name your first name still spelled backwards? Zero asked. Stanley stared at him in amazement for a moment. Had he been working on that all night? He heard the sounds of approaching cars. Mr. Sir and the warden heard it as well. You think it's them? asked the warden. It ain't the Girl Scouts selling cookies, said Mr. Sir. He heard the cars come to a stop and the doors open and shut. A little while later, he saw Mr. Pandansky and two strangers coming across the lake. One was a tall man in a business suit and cowboy hat. The other was a short woman holding a briefcase. The woman had to take three steps for every two the man was taking. Stanley Yelnats, she called, moving out ahead of the others. I suggest you don't go any closer, said Mr. Sir. You can't stop me, she snapped, then took a second glance at him, wearing pajama pants and nothing else. We'll get you out of here, Stanley, she said. Don't you worry. She appeared to be Hispanic, with straight back hair and dark eyes. She spoke with a little bit of a Mexican accent, tr trilling her R's. What in tar 
damnation, the tall man exclaimed as he came up behind her. She turned to him. I'm telling you right now, if any harm comes to him, we will be filing charges not only against Miss Walker and the Camp Green Lake, but the entire state of Texas as well. Child abuse, false imprisonment, torture. The man was more than a head taller than she and was able to look directly over her as, she, as he spoke to the warden. How long have they been in there? All night, as you can see by the way we're dressed. They snuck into my cabin while I was asleep and stole my suitcase. I chased after them and they ran out here and fell into the lizard's nest. I don't know what they were thinking. That's not true, Stanley said. Stanley, as your attorney, I advise you not to say anything, said the woman, until you and I have had a chance to talk in private. Stanley wondered why the warden lied about the suitcase. He wondered who it legally belonged to. That was one thing he wanted to ask his lawyer, if she really was his lawyer. It's a miracle they're alive, said the tall man. Yes, it is, the warden agreed, with just a trace of disappointment in her voice. And they better come out of this alive, Stanley's lawyer warned. This would have, wouldn't have happened if you'd released him to me yesterday. It wouldn't have happened if he was a, wasn't a thief, said the warden. I told him he would be set free today, today, and I guess he decided he wanted to try and take some of my valuables with him. He's been delirious for the last week. Why didn't you release him when she came to you yesterday, the tall man asked. She didn't have proper author authorization, said the warden. I have a court order. It was, um, it was, uh, it was, it was not authenticated, the warden said. Authenticated? It was signed by the judge who sentenced him. I needed authentication from the attorney general, said the warden. How do I know it's legitimate? The boys in my custody have proven themselves dangerous to society. Am I supposed to just turn them loose any time someone comes shaking a piece of paper at me? Yes, said the warden. The woman, if it's a court order. Sorry, guys. Pickle. Stanley has been hospitalized for the last few days, the warden explained. He's been suffering from hallucinations. Hallucinate hallucinations, and delirium, ranting and raving. He was in no condition to leave. The fact that he was trying to steal from me on the day before his relief proves Stanley tried to climb out of his hole, using mostly his arms, trying not to disturb the lizards too much. As he pulled himself upward, the lizards moved downward, keeping out of the sun's direct rays. He swung his legs up and over, and the last of the lizards hopped off. Thank God, exclaimed the warden. She started towards him, then stopped. A lizard crawled out of his pocket and down his leg. Stanley was overcome by a rush of dizziness and almost fell over. He steadied himself, then reached down, took hold of Zero's arm, and helped him slowly to his feet. Zero still held the suitcase. The lizards, which had been hiding under it, scurried quickly into the hole. Stanley and Zero staggered away. The warden rushed to them. She hugged Zero. Thank God you're alive, she said, as she tried to take the suitcase from him. He jerked it free. It belongs to Stanley, he said. Don't cause any more trouble, the warden warned. You stole it from my cabin, and you've been caught red-handed. If I press charges, Stanley might have to return to prison. Now I'm willing, in view of all the circumstances, to... It's got his name on it said Zero. Stanley's lawyer pushed past the tall man to have a look. See? Zero showed her. Stanley, yell, Max. Stanley looked too. There, in big black letters, was Stanley Yelnax. The tall man looked over the heads of the others at the name on the suitcase. You say he stole it from your cabin? The warden stared at this in disbelief. That's, that's impossible. It's impossible. No, it's impossible. She couldn't even say it. Chapter 48. They slowly walked back to camp. The tall man was the Texas Attorney General, the Chief of Law Enforcement Officer for the state. Stanley's lawyer was named Miss Marengo. Stanley held the suitcase. He was so tired he couldn't think straight. 
He felt as if he were walking in a dream, not quite able to comprehend what was going on around him. They stopped in front of the camp office. Mr. Sir went inside to get Stanley's belongings. The attorney general told Mr. Pendansky to get the boys something to drink and eat. The warden seemed in a daze as Stanley. You, you can't even read, she said to Zero. Zero said nothing. Miss Marengo put a hand on Stanley's shoulder and told him to hang in there. He would be seeing his parents soon. She was shorter than Stanley, but somehow gave the appearance of being tall. Mr. Pendansky turned with two cartons of orange juice and two bagels. Stanley drank the juice, but didn't feel like eating anything. Wait, the warden exclaimed. I didn't say the they stole the suitcase. It's his suitcase, obviously, but he put his things from my cabin inside of it. That isn't what you said earlier, said Miss Marengo. What's in the suitcase, the warden asked Stanley. Tell us what's in the suitcase, then we'll open it and see. <coughs> Stanley didn't know what to do. Stanley, as your lawyer, I'd advise you not to open your suitcase, said Miss Marengo. He has to open it, said the warden. I have the right to check the personal property of any of the detainees. How do I know there isn't any drugs or weapons in there? He stole a car, too. I've got witnesses. She was nearly hysterical. He ha is no longer under your jurisdiction, said Stanley's lawyer. He has not been officially released, said the warden. Open the suitcase, Stanley. Don't open it, said Stanley's lawyer. Stanley did nothing. Mr. Sir returned from the office with Stanley's backpack and clothes. The attorney general handed Miss Marengo a sheet of paper. You're free to go, he said to Stanley. I know you're anxious to get out of here, so you can just keep the orange suit as a souvenir. Or burn it, whatever you want. Good luck, Stanley. <coughs> he reached out his hand to shake, but Miss Marengo hurried St Stanley away. Come on, Stanley. We have a lot to talk about. Stanley stopped and turned to look at Zero. He couldn't just leave him here. Zero gave him the thumbs up sign. I can't leave Hector, Stanley said. I suggest we go, said his lawyer with a sense of urgency in her voice. I'll be okay, said Zero, his eyes shifting towards Mr. Pendansky on one side of him and the warden and Mr. Sir on the other. There's nothing I can do for your friend, said Miss Marengo. You are released you are released pursuant in order from to to you are released pursuant to an order from the judge. They'll kill him, said Stanley. Your friend's not any in any danger, said the atten attorney general. There's going to be an investigation into everything that's happened here. From the present, I'm taking charge of the camp. Come on, Stanley, his lawyer said. Your parents are waiting. Stanley stayed where he was. His lawyer sighed. <sighs> May I have a look at... Hector's file, she said. Certainly, said the attorney general. Miss Walker, go get Hector's file. She looked at him blankly. Well? The warden turned to Mr. Pandansky. Bring me Hector Zeroni's file. He stared at her. Get it, she ordered. Mr. Pandansky went into the office. He returned a few minutes later and announced the file was apparently misplaced. The attorney general was outraged. What kind of camp are you running here, Miss Walker? The warden said nothing. She stared at the suitcase. The attorney general assured Stanley's lawyer that he would get the records. Excuse me while I call the office. He turned back to the warden. I assume the phone works? He walked into the camp office, slamming the door behind him. A little while later, he appeared and told the warden he wanted to talk to her. She cursed and then went inside. Stanley gave Zero a thumbs up. Caveman? Is that you? He turned to see Armpit and Squid coming out of the rec room. Squid shouted back into the rec room, Caveman and Zero are out here! Soon, all the boys from Group D had gathered around him and Zero. Good to see you, man, Armpit said, shaking his hands. We thought you were buzzard food. Stanley's being released today, said Mr. Pendansky. Way to go, said Magnet, hitting him on the shoulder. 
and you didn't even have to step on a rattlesnake, said Squid. <coughs> even Zigzag shook Stanley's hand. Sorry about, you know. It's cool, said Stanley. We had to lift the truck clear out of the hole, Zigzag told him. It took everybody in C, D, and E. We just picked it right on up. It was really cool, said Twitch. X-Ray was the one who didn't come over. Stanley saw him hang back behind the others a moment, then return to the rec room. Guess what, said Magnet, glancing at Mr. Pendansky. Mom says we don't have to dig any more holes. That's great, Stanley said. Will you do me a favor, asked Squid. I guess, Stanley agreed, somewhat hesitantly. I want you to... He turned to Miss Marengo. Hey, lady, do you have a pen and paper I can borrow? She gave it to him, and Squid wrote down a phone number when he gave it to Stanley. Call my mom for me, okay? Tell her... Tell her I said I was sorry. Tell her Alan said he was sorry. Stanley promised he would. Now you be careful out there in the real world, said Armpit. Not everybody is as nice as us. Stanley smiled. The boys departed when the warden came out of the office. The attorney general was right behind her. My office is having difficulty locating Hector Zeroni's records, the attorney general said. So you have no claim of authority over him? asked Miss Marengo. I didn't say that. He's in the computer. We just can't access his records. It's like they've fallen through a hole in cyberspace. A hole in cyberspace, Miss Marengo repeated. How interesting. When is his release date? I don't know. How long has he been there? Like I said, I can't. So what are you planning to do with him? Keep him confined indefinitely without jurisdiction while you go crawling through black holes in cyberspace? The attorney general stared at her. He was obviously incarcerated for a reason. <laughs> oh, and what reason was that? The attorney general said nothing. Stanley's lawyer took hold of Zero's hand. Come on, Hector. You're coming with us. Okay, so we'll, we will read chapters 49 and 50 tomorrow over our live holes together. And then on Friday of this week, we are going to watch the holes video live together. Hopefully I can figure it out. I will figure it out, I promise, okay? All right, I'm so excited for tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow for chapters 49 and 50. Now go back in those daily emails and answer those questions. Love you guys.